I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Greetings to you, our worldwide web church family. This is Church on the Rock Baptist, emanating live from the sanctuary at 2995 Yerba Buena Road in America's 10th largest city, San Jose, California. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, your automobiles, your places of business, or wherever you may be viewing us to let you know that it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you, you, and yes, even you. So you pull up a chair, gather your family and friends, like and share this page. Let everyone know that Pastor Moore and Church on the Rock are on the air. And for the next few moments, let's worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. We want to hear from you. You may give us a call at area code 408-532-ROCK. Or go to our website at www.churchontherockbaptist.com. Every now and then, type amen, praise the Lord, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, sing, preach, but let us know that you're out there enjoying this outreach ministry. Finally, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, don't you worry, don't you fret, he's still God, and he has never failed us yet, and we will be all right someday. Oh, I'll be all right.
locks the door. And we're praying for you today, wherever you are, all over the world. God is everywhere at the same time. And if you have the faith, God has the power. We're praying for you today, Sister Mary Ann Roberts, Naomi Smith, Norma Jean Roberts, Brother Mosey Hill and family. We're praying for you, Renee Tyler, Brother Gary Altman, Brenda Dennis, and Sister Helen Armstrong. Sister Fleeta May Bixby, Willie Ed and Mary Helen Malone, Robin Brown Young, Kelly Sue Collins, Good morning, Sister Collins, Kelton Waller, Harvey and Denise McGee Hoskins, and Lynn, Sharon Ashley Maurice, and Rodney McGee and their family. Janetta Reginald Whitney and Micah Moore. The original Medea, Sister Johnny Kathy in Atlanta, Georgia. We are praying for you. Linda, Lamisha, and Lonnie Gilmore. Jerome Kathy. James, Jerry, Jeanette, and Joe Garner. We are praying for you. Rosemary Hernandez Borges, Candice Romero, Jean Phillips and family in Jackson, Mississippi, Sister Mary L. Rice in South Haven, Mississippi, Brother Bob Slater, Betty Stallworth Davis, Sister Victoria Baines in Las Vegas, Nevada. Good morning, Sister Baines. We are praying for you. Garfield, Rosalind, and Denise Ralph and family. Ronald and Karen Jones, their daughter Sam Tamise in McDonough, Georgia. Sister Clara Jones Smith on vacation. We miss you this morning and we're praying for you today. Janetta Elliott, Roy and Sandra Johnson, Melissa Lawson, Marilyn Mariah Manuel. Sister Thelma McGee Carver, Lakeisha and Thea Bradley, Priscilla White, Angela Venable and family in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Good to see Sister Robin Calhoun in the audience today. Brother Charles Calhoun, Star Crawford, Mary Jane and Pierre Larry, Jasmine Smith, Mae Johnson. Pastor Larry Ellis, Pastor Emil Thomas, Pastor Henry L. Davis, Jr., Mrs. Weta Davis in Detroit, Kirk and Jackie Ford Jackson, Marla Scarrett, Don Rulis, Walter Louise Lynette and Raquel Crawley, Helen Jones, Hope Richard, Sandra McNeil, Stephanie Gaines, Susan Vargas Rinconis, Diane Miles in New Orleans, Marvin McGee in Milwaukee, Sadie Tinsley, Sister Carrie Kramer, Brenda Ireland and family, good morning. We are praying for you and we thank you for your prayers for us. Robert Griffin in Sacramento, Pastor Donald L. Parson, Ariel Crawford, Deacon Wilbur Butler, Archie Robinson in Petersburg, Virginia, Everest Robinson in New Orleans, Jacqueline Thomas Dorset in Los Banos. We're praying for all those who have suffered loss in the Miami area with the building that has crumbled. Praying for all of those who are still fighting COVID-19. All of those who have lost jobs 
and all frontline essential workers. Now, as we get ready to join with you in prayer, if you're hurting this morning, I want you to lay your head where you're hurting. And together, we're going to talk to God and ask Him to take away your pain. Use just a little more faith. Remove that doubt from your mind. And let's believe that God will answer our prayers. Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Lord, we want to thank you, God, for another opportunity to come to you, God, to praise you and worship you, God, to honor you for all the main things that you've done in our lives, God. We want to give you thanksgiving for waking us up this morning, putting food on our table, closing our backs, God, all the necessities that you brought upon us, God, that we don't deserve, God, because there are many others that don't have what we, that we have, God, but you spared us, God, you had grace and mercy on us, God, and we want to just say thank you for that. Thank you, God, for this church, God, this church family, God, this Facebook ministry, God, our pastor, God. Thank you, God, for just being able to come to a church that believes in you, God, that follows you, God, the right way, God. Thank you, God, for our families, God. Thank you, God, for keeping us away from sick, harm, or danger, God. You have protected us, God. You have been there for us, God, through the thick end of thing, God, more than we could ever be to ourselves, God. We just want to say thank you for that. Lord, we have not lived up to a perfect example that you set for us in Jesus, and we sin against you in thought, word, and deed, and we're sorry for our sins, God. I pray that you will just clean us up, God. Make us more like your son, Jesus Christ, God. I just pray that you will just make us whole, God. Make us brand new, God, every single day. I pray for those that are sick and afflicted, God. Those who are in the hospitals, God. Those who cannot get a prayer through, God. I pray that you will come through for them, God, because they believe in they believe in you, God. They depend on you, God. Those that Pastor Warren has mentioned, God, I pray that you will comfort them, God. Yes, you come through yes. for them, God. Everybody say this 
Bibles, turn with me now to Proverbs. Proverbs. Amen. There's a misprint there on the screen, but it's Proverbs chapter 29, verse number 2. And then turn over to Psalm 103. Amen. Psalm 103. I want to look at verses 2 through 5. Proverbs 29 and 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Turn over to Psalm 103, verses 2 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Turn around and look at somebody. Say, the day democracy wept. Oh, by and by when the morning come in all the saints of God are gathered at home. Oh, we will take Our brave law enforcement officers 
attacked the Capitol Police mercilessly, using their own tasers against them. Allow me to put my kickstand down and pause for an infomercial. Do you know where the name Taser came from? In 1911, Stratemeyer Syndicate, under the pen name of Victor Appleton, wrote a book entitled Tom Swift and His Electric Rifle. It's the story of a man who invents an electric rifle and goes on an African safari to hunt elephants for ivory. Sixty years later, the invention of a non-lethal electrical weapon by Jack Cover became known as the Taser. So named to pay homage to the book's original concept, TASER, T-A-S-E-R, is an acronym that stands for Thomas A. Swift Electric Rifle. The A was simply added for ease of pronunciation. Tasers weren't the only thing used against the police on January 6th. The rioters used anything they could to inflict pain on the police. Fists, fingers, and eyes, and the pure bodily force of the mob and the decision not to use lethal force uh, against our own citizens uh, thwarted any attempt uh, to hold uh, them back. Uh, in the end, uh, the insurrection has caused $30 million uh, in damages uh, to our capital building. Uh, a cost that you and I will have to absorb through our taxes. It was surely a day when democracy wept. This is what happens when wickedness overpowers righteousness. I didn't say it, Solomon did. Uh, and why Solomon uh, or Jedediah, his Hebrew name, uh, could look to some of Israel's past judges uh, for affirmation. Uh, Israel's period of the judges was not a particularly proud time uh, in its history. The judges were appointed to lead Israel against its oppressors, and God gave them many victories. But every time a judge died, Israel's faithfulness died. They went astray again and again. Uh, returning to sinful practices uh, and uh, idolatry. Uh, it was a constant cycle uh, of sin uh, and deliverance. Uh, whenever their godly judges died, uh, Judges 21 and 25 says, uh, everyone uh, did uh, whatever he wanted. Uh, Israel rebels, uh, God disciplines them. Uh, Israel repents, uh, God delivers them. Uh, and so uh, it went uh, over and over again. Uh, Solomon knew the pain uh, of wickedness. 
this uh, through his own actions, uh, his support of the idolatrous faiths uh, of his own concubine uh, caused his own failure as uh, a leader. Uh, he searched for pleasure, but in the end, uh, he came to realize uh, that vanity of the vanities, uh, all pursuits uh, for happiness uh, outside of God uh, are futile. Uh, it's like grasping uh, at the wind. Uh, Solomon realized all too late uh, that people uh, can only rejoice uh, under righteous uh, authority. Uh, oh yes, uh, we have uh, a righteous uh, ruler. Uh, let me say that again. Uh, we uh, have uh, a righteous uh, ruler. Uh, no, uh, it's not our president. Uh, it's God uh, himself. Uh, he alone uh, is able to keep us uh, on the straight uh, and narrow way uh, that will lead us uh, to our heavenly uh, home. Uh, but just like Solomon uh, now, Satan pulls us uh, into his camp uh, with familiar enticements. Uh, for the insurrectionist, uh, it was a sense uh, of entitlement. Uh, it's our country, uh, and they uh, are trying uh, to steal it. Uh, it's our country, uh, and we have to show them uh, who's boss. Uh, it's our country, uh, and we need uh, to take uh, it back. Uh, oh, uh, the capital, uh, our temple of democracy, uh, was defiled. Uh, by Satan's imps uh, and despite their complete disregard uh, for the rule of law uh, they were extended uh, an almost mythical graciousness uh, as they laid siege uh, as though they lived uh, in the banana republic of Paraguay uh, or uh, uh, the capital police uh, raised no weapons uh, against these uh, intruders. Uh, it was a stark contrast uh, to the police response uh, to the peaceful protest uh, of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, on uh, Capitol Mall, uh, where tear gas uh, and our National Guard uh, were used to clear a path uh, for the president uh, to lift a Bible uh, he likely never read uh, because it makes no mention uh, of him. It was Satan's uh, age-old uh, ploy. Uh, it was just on uh, a larger scale uh, than most of us uh, are used to sing. Uh, the truth is uh, that we too uh, are subject uh, to Satan's uh, scams, uh, schemes, uh, and uh, strategies. Uh, he sucks us in uh, in using uh, his tactical arsenal uh, to uh, he'll make a bad man uh, think uh, he is good. Uh, he'll make a dishonest man uh, think he is honest. Uh, he'll make a corrupt man uh, think uh, he is clean. Uh, he'll make a vulgar man uh, think he is virtuous. Uh, he'll make a proud man uh, think he uh, is humble. Uh, he'll make a greedy man uh, think uh, he is generous. Uh, and he can even Make a miserable man think he is happy. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, most of us can. 
consider ourselves uh, at least somewhat knowledgeable uh, of God's plan uh, for our lives. Uh, and yet we still sometimes uh, get off track uh, and take a detour from the straight uh, and narrow way. Uh, straight uh, to sin's uh, broad street. Uh, there is not a life uh, that Satan uh, has not touched. Uh, are y'all in here? Uh, not a relationship uh, he has not tarnished. Uh, not a heart uh, that he has not troubled. Uh, not a mind he has not tormented, not a home he has not taunted, not an individual he has not tempted. And sadly, it's most often because we allow it, invite it, attract it, or even summon it. We on him. Uh, so how uh, can we recognize uh, when our choices uh, do not line up uh, with the will uh, of God? Uh, you know you're living uh, outside the will of God uh, when your actions uh, become self-centered. Uh, you begin to view everything uh, in terms uh, of its benefit uh, to yourself. Uh, your first thought becomes, uh, what's in it uh, for me? Uh, your focus is not on being a help to others. Uh, it's all about uh, helping uh, yourself. Uh, you may carry a flag uh, of freedom, uh, but your focus uh, is on your own uh, freedom. Uh, the freedom uh, to do uh, what you want uh, when uh, you want. Uh, Self-centeredness uh, is a dangerous disease. Uh, it makes you uh, selfish. Uh, it will convince you uh, that your rights uh, supersede uh, the rights uh, of everyone else. Uh, it can turn a businessman uh, into a greedy man. Uh, it can even turn a father into a tyrant. Uh, it can turn a teenager into uh, a nightmare. Uh, it can turn a marriage uh, into a mess. Uh, it can turn your home uh, into a prison. Uh, it can turn a patriot uh, into uh, a pariah. Uh, your sanctimonious, uh, pompous uh, selfishness uh, will weaken you, uh, oppress you, uh, corrupt you, uh, deceive you, uh, defile you, uh, and ultimately uh, it will uh, destroy you. Uh, come on and help me preach this, won't you, church? Uh, well, uh, we know uh, what makes uh, democracy weak. Uh, we saw it with our own eyes uh, on January 6th. Uh, it is a day that will go down uh, in infamy uh, as the day uh, democracy uh, went. Uh, thousands gave up their democracy uh, to follow after autocracy. Uh, they followed one voice uh, and sadly uh, it was uh, the wrong uh, voice uh, but the truth is uh, that God uh, is not uh, democratic yeah. I'll say it again uh, the truth is uh, God uh, is not uh, democratic uh, he too uh, is autocratic uh, he uh, is uh, sovereign. Uh, 
but he is holy. Thank you, God. If there is one thing we need to learn from democracy's tears, it's that we need to be careful who we follow. Follow God and you will reap benefits, not burdens. Oh, I'm in Bible country, everybody. Psalm 103, verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. But what are the benefits of following God? I'm glad you asked that question. Now I have a chance to tell you. The psalmist spells it out for us. In the verses that follow, first he forgives all your sins. Turn around, look at somebody, say it real loud. He forgives all your sins. Give the Lord a hand to praise. Oh yes, it's not that God does not hate sin. Sin offends him. Uh, but God's anger is not like man's anger. Uh, he is just uh, and uh, controlled. Uh, he balances justice uh, with mercy. Uh, the psalmist says, uh, the Lord uh, is uh, merciful uh, and gracious, uh, slow to anger and plenteous uh, in mercy. Uh, God uh, does not continually accuse us, uh, nor does he stay angry uh, forever. Uh, if he did, uh, most of us uh, would not be sitting here today uh, because justice uh, would have had its way uh, a long uh, time ago. Uh, tell your neighbor, thank God uh, for grace. Christ, uh, if we spend 
less time walking around like wounded zombies and more time celebrating our deliverance. We've all been healed, healed through the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We may still have aches and pains in our joints, but we are healed. We may still have bad lab reports from the doctor, but we are healed. We may still have that bunion pinching us with pain, but we are healed. We are healed because Jesus has redeemed our soul and separated it from life's suffering. Which brings me to my third and final point today. But good luck for this one, y'all. Finally, the psalmist says that he redeemeth thy life from destruction. He crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfied thy mouth with good things. Well, that's a resurrection testimony. Jesus rose from the dead so that we who believe in him would follow him into eternity. Our earthly death is the ultimate healer because we've got another building as the old saints would say. But abundant life does not start when we die. It starts right now. At the moment that we confess Jesus as our Savior, Satan comes to steal. But the Apostle John reminds us that Christ came that we might have life more abundantly. God crowns us with his loving kindness and tender mercies and he showers us with good things while others are celebrating our nation's freedom. We who are the call of God should be celebrating our own liberation, the liberty that can only come from Christ. St. Augustine said, we have no rest until we find rest in thee. Well, democracy may be weeping. It may be weeping over its past decision to follow the wrong man. It may be struggling to gain a righteous footing on this now shaky foundation. But we are celebrating today because we are following the right one, Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. No wonder the psalmist cries, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Is the 
and follow those instructions. Or you may mail your offering, your tithe, to Church on the Rock, Post Office Box 730-341, San Jose, California, 95173. Thank you for what you're about to do to help to continue the ministry of Church on the Rock. We know that God will never let you outgive Him. Well, happy Independence Day. And until next time, same time, same place. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary. If you're here locally in San Jose, Silicon Valley, the San Francisco Bay Area, come and worship with us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We're here. And to those of you all across the world, thank you for your prayers, your support, and we hope to see you next time. Until then, stay on the battlefield. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. We know that God will answer prayer. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.